Cardinal O'Malley, while Bishop of Fall River, Massachusetts, now the Archbishop of Boston, highlighted the eternal consequences of voting. He wrote, I will not vote for any politician who will promote abortion or the culture of death, no matter how appealing the rest of his or her program might be. They are wolves in sheep's garments, the KKK without the sheets, and sadly enough, they don't even know it. If I were ever tempted to vote for simply selfish reasons, tribal allegiances, or economic advantages, rather than on the moral direction of the country, I should beat a hasty retreat from the curtain of the polling booth to the curtain of the confessional. I hope no one here needed to go to confession last Wednesday morning. Now, the first reports told us that the Catholic vote was dividing 50-50. A more careful analysis, however, reveals that 67% of regular mass goers actually voted for Mitt Romney. I said earlier that vigorous secularization demands vigorous evangelization. That means a few things. Number one, we have got to get more people into our churches and to educate them. It is clear that people who have a more informed Catholic conscience vote according to an informed Catholic conscience. We must also do what we can to disenfranchise Catholic politicians who don't represent the Catholic point of view. The Greek New Testament has two words for time. Chronos, which measures time by the hour, month, or year, and kairos, which refers to a particularly propitious moment. I want to suggest that we are face to face with a genuine kairos, for which we need to thank Barack Obama, as he has awakened, I hope, the sleeping giant in the Catholic Church of this nation. An axiom asserts knowledge is power. That's true. However, only if the knowledge is acted upon. This is the time to be informed and to inform others. This is the time to act while action is still possible. If we Catholics, in concert with others of goodwill, respond to the current crisis, another Greek word, by the way, meaning an opportunity for judgment and decision, if we respond to the current crisis with intelligence and conviction and courage, we will have performed a most valuable, indeed a most precious service, not only for Catholics, but for all freedom-loving people throughout the world. Thank you.
pain rose to his prominence in arguably an extremely left-wing district. And you cannot find a Catholic politician who more consistently represents Catholic social teaching than Chris Smith. And right now, it would be impossible to unseat him in that district. So I think this is, let's remember also that political officials or candidates for office also have a moral responsibility to help forge a point of view. And 90% of the so-called Catholic politicians who have sold out at one point in their career were not there, right? The, the Kennedys, for example, in the early days of the abortion crisis, they were not pro-abortion. They became that because they saw that they thought the wind was moving in that direction. But with the influence that they wielded in New England, for example, it would have been very, very easy for them to say, no, 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 that's wrong. We shouldn't be going there. And instead, they capitulated. How, I'm not going to be able to say this as clearly as I would like to, but from what I understand, my Catholic is sort of conservative tradition. This country and the Constitution is founded on masonry, Masonic principles. Most presidents were Masonic, were part of the Masons, which the church usually never mentions, but they'll say secular when they're trying to talk about Mason. How can a Catholic try to change something that's intrinsically in that Constitution, and most of the founding fathers were Masonic, if we look at all of our organizations, secular, Rotary, Lions, Elks, all Masonic principles are secularism. How do you change anything for real? Okay. Uh, first of all, I dispute the point that the Bill of Rights and the Constitution are inherently Masonic. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> most of the fundamental principles contained in there are directly taken from a Spanish Jesuit's political philosophy in the 17th century uh, and completely consonant with, with Catholic social principles. Uh, now, that there were Masons involved, Fine. But the point of the matter is, has nothing to do with who was or wasn't a Mason. It's the document itself. There is nothing that one can find in any of the foundational documents to suggest anything other than a traditional Christian understanding of the individual and society. And so, absent any proof to the contrary, I don't see anything that we're arguing about at that point. Um, your, uh, another comment that triggered something else which has gone out of my head, uh, but somebody may say. So, uh, I, I think, yeah. Catholic, with this country, oh, well, it may have been influenced, yes, for many various, but basically it was France and, and the rights of man, which was battling in Masonry, and we have later on a Pope. Well, but, but, the the rights, of, but the rights of man, is not an uncatholic concept. You know, St. Irenaeus in the second century said the glory of God is man fully alive. Okay? Uh, so we're not against the rights of man. As a matter of fact, anywhere the Catholic Church has gone and preached the gospel, the dignity of the human person has been raised to a level that it never had before. So we ought not to get ourselves uh, boxed into a corner as though somehow or other we're opposed to the rights of man. We're not. It's the correct flowering of the rights of man that we want to promote. And so, I, you know, the, the left, politically, from the 18th century forward, has always been able to use language to advantage. You know, our Lord counseled us in the Gospel that we're to be as innocent as doves, but as cunning as serpents. And very often we're neither. <laughs> And, uh, and that becomes a serious problem. I think, for example, at the beginning of the abortion movement, the brilliance, the diabolical brilliance of the pro-abortionists to talk about freedom of choice. 
and it took us years to come up with the expression pro-life, right? Because we're not into the marketing. We, as people of faith, people who are, quote, conservative, we tend to think that because it's true, it's self-evidently true, and we don't have to do anything with bells and whistles to make it appear more true. But that's not the way you market an idea. Uh, I believe that every position of Catholic moral theology is 400% correct, but our packaging of it is horrible, right? We're perceived as the church of no. No birth control, no abortion, no divorce or remarriage, no, no, no. But the point is, it's a church of yes. It's, it's a, a, a resounding affirmation of life and, and integrity and, and, and fidelity and so forth. And we're not good at packaging things that way, and that's why we generally lose in the public forum.